Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green token combo deck titled Craterhoof, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the game plan of the deck is very straightforward, and if you've seen my Swine Surprise video in Standard a while back, you'll already be familiar with it. And the plan is to make a whole bunch of creature tokens using our various sorceries, and eventually target one of our tokens with either Creativity or Transmogrify, which will be guaranteed to hit a copy of Craterhoof Behemoth, which is the only actual creature in the deck. And then we get access to a 5-5 Beast with haste, and when Crater Hoof enters the battlefield, creatures we control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures we control. And of course, since we're a token deck, we can expect Crater Hoof to deal a ton of damage and often just end the game on the spot, especially if we can search up two copies of Crater Hoof Behemoth, which we can do if we cast Indomitable Creativity for X equals two. So we'll need to sacrifice two of our tokens to then search up two copies of Crater Hoof. So that's our game plan. Now, one of the perks of adding green to the deck as opposed to just being mono red, which would give us X to Dwarven Mine as a land to make an additional token, so there's definitely upsides to being mono red as well. The upside is that we of course get access to Sapling Migration as another great 2 mana token maker that we can potentially kick for 6 mana total to make 4 tokens. We can sometimes hard cast our Crater Hoof Behemoth, and we also get to cast Kahira, the Orphan Guard, as our companion, since the only actual creature in the deck happens to be a beast, so it will also get the plus 1 plus 1 bonus from Kahira. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at 1 mana, full place of Satyr's Cunning as a way to make a 1-1 Seder creature token that cannot block and can also escape it out of the graveyard for two and a red, so it gives us a way to make use of our graveyard as well, which is nice. Then at two mana, plenty of token makers that make two tokens. Dragon Fodder makes two red goblin creature tokens. We've got Forbidden Friendship making a hasty red dinosaur token and a white human token. And then Sapperling Migration making two Sapperlings can also be kicked for four additional mana to make four tokens instead, so it can be nice in the late game. And then we also have the full play set of Fire Prophecy dealing three damage to target creature gives us a bit of interaction, and then we can put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, and if we do draw a card, so this is very useful if we happen to draw a copy of Crater Hoof Behemoth, so we can put it back into the deck, and can also be useful if we're just missing one of our combo pieces, maybe we have multiple copies of Creativity and Transmogrify, can get rid of one of them to find more token makers, or the other way around. And then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Chandra Acolyte of Flame, starts out at 4 loyalty and has two zero abilities, one of which makes two hasty elemental tokens, which will also synergize with our creativity and transmogrify game plan. And then the minus 2 lets us cast an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard, and then we have to exile it so it can potentially get back one of our token makers or removal spells, and can also get back our indomitable creativity, and then we can still cast it for x equals 1 or x equals 2, so that's a nice synergy as well. And then we've got our Transmogrify, which exiles target creature, and that creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card and put that card on the battlefield. And then we've got Creativity, which destroys X, target artifacts and or creatures, and for each permanent destroyed this way, its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until an artifact or creature card is revealed, and then exiles that card, and those players put the exiled cards onto the battlefield and then shuffle their libraries. So we can potentially use Transmogrify or Creativity as kind of a janky removal spell, but of course for the most part we're going to be targeting our own tokens. Now if the opponent has instant speed removal, they can kill our creature in response, and then of course in the case of Transmogrify, we don't have any creature to exile to the Transmogrify, so we won't get to search up Crater Hoof. In the case of Creativity, if we can cast it for X equals 2 or 3 and target multiple things, we can potentially still beat a removal spell. So of course we prefer to have Creativity over Transmogrify in most cases, and Creativity also has the upside of avoiding a card like Graph Digger's Cage, which normally prevents a card like Transmogrify from searching up a Crater Hoof and putting it in play, but because Creativity exiles the card first and then puts it on the battlefield, it can get around Graph Digger's Cage. And then we've got our two copies of Crater Hoof Behemoth, two copies so that if we do have one in hand and the opponent somehow makes us discard it, we still have a backup, and it also allows us to potentially cast Creativity for X equals 2 in case one Crater Hoof is not enough. And then a mana base, we also get to play with four copies of Castle Emberth, which is very important for the backup plan. In case we don't manage to pull off Transmogrify or Creativity, we can still start beating down with our tokens and pump them up with our Castle Emberth. And that's also a reason why I didn't end up in a mono red version with Dwarven Mine, is because Castle Emberth is not an actual mountain, so it's a bit of a nombo with the Dwarven Mine. And then we've got six basic mountains, two basic forests, and then a whole bunch of dual lands with our Pathway, Rootbound Crag, and Stomping Ground. And before I forget, the full play 
consisted of a Valakut Awakening, which we can play as a tap land or as a 3 mana instant, putting any number of cards from our hand on the bottom of our library, and then draw that many cards plus one, so also potentially a way for us to put a Crater Hoof on the bottom of our library, or find the missing combo pieces by getting rid of cards we don't need. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got three creativity-like effects, only one token maker. So that's not great, but, you know, there's more token makers in the deck than creativity or transmogrify. So, we'll try it. And then if we find Valakut Awakening or Prophecy, we can get rid of one pretty easily. Facing Goblins. With a turn on Prospector, so... Goblins is definitely a winnable matchup since it doesn't have much interaction. And we're definitely capable of winning on turn 4. Although, the Golden deck with a very good draw can also potentially get there on turn 3 if they hit the perfect Muxus and they start out with a turn 1 Prospector, so... We'll see what happens. The main interaction we're afraid of is an instant speed jump home cycled in response to creativity, or something like a Goblin Chamberlain killing all my tokens. Pretty surprised with that Prospector attack, so I'll take the trade. Don't want to trade with a Wily Goblin, but Prospector is a lot scarier. And then we'll just make some more tokens, and next turn we could go for Transmogrify. At least enough to be scared of a turn 3 Muxus. It's gonna be Chieftain instead. So if I were to Transmogrify right now, how much damage are we talking? Three creatures getting plus three each. So that's nine plus seven, sixteen. It's not lethal, but still seems worth it. And then next turn I can potentially grab a second crater hoof. And my opponent's still unable to cast Muxus, so the best they can do is Cranko. Which is not gonna be a lethal. Alright, there's another Prospector into Krenko. Alright, that's potentially a lot more dangerous. So now if they also have a Muxus in hand, things could get bad. But nope, just uh, Krenko on defense. And then I guess we'll go with Satyr's Cunning into Creativity on the Satyr token we just made. Since there's only one Crater Hoof left in the deck. And hope they don't have a Jump Helm in hand. Although my opponent will be able to add a lot of toughness in front of this attack, so... Well, let's see if we have enough. We've got 28 points of Trample. I think we'll be fine here. Alright, that sapperling is very dead. GG's. And there we go. Beat goblins. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And don't love this hand. We've got two token makers, no transmogrifies. And a crater hoof, which doesn't do much for me. This is better. So I'm keeping... It's actually interesting what I keep. Could bottom the Satyr's Cunning, because one token isn't all that much in this grand scheme of things, and I have two lands coming into play tapped, so playing this turn one is going to be tough anyway. And then I don't think I'm using the Awakening to shuffle any cards back, because it's always nice to have a backup Transmogrify. Alright, we drew a Satyr's Cunning, but for now we'll just... Uh, Play friendship, hit for one. There's an argument for playing this as a red source in case I draw basic forest, otherwise I might be unable to cast creativity on curve. But the green mana could be useful, of course, if we find migration or wanna cast or kahira. 
Unal's blank card probably isn't going to block any of our tokens. And then we still get to play Satyr's Cunning. And then next turn we could Transmogrify, which might not quite be lethal. Opponent's keeping up three mana. Drawing the Crater Hoof, a little awkward. Yeah, I mean, we could definitely see a Fatal Push in response to Transmogrify, which would foil our plan. Uh, if I do pull it off, how much damage are we talking about? Creatures get plus three, so nine, plus seven, 16. So we'll put my opponent to one if they don't have anything. But yeah, the main concern is instant speed removal here. Opponent's playing some sort of rogue deck. If my Transmogrify doesn't work out, I can still try and get an next turn with creativity, so I think I still go for it. Alright, opponent had a Heartless Act. And we'll get in for two. Never mind. Enforcer... It's gonna come down and prevent the attack. Well. Now Enforcer, with a counter from Blackguard, is going to make us discard. Can discard Crater Hoof. So now we go to top deck, another Transmogrify-like effect. Do have Castle Embereth, so that can pump my tokens, which is why Enforcer's staying back. Exile Crater Hoof so they don't have a target for potential cling to dust to gain life. No one has seen my face and lived. Davriel's gonna increase the clock. And there's creativity. There's only one Crater Hoof left in the deck. I could play around Fatal Push here by targeting two tokens. If I target two tokens, I'll still have four creatures getting plus four plus four, so that should still be plenty to win the game here. Since we're talking four times four is 16, plus another eight, it's 24 trample, even with five toughness, we would get there. So it's probably worth it here to do x equals two, target a satyr and I guess a sapperling. Right, no response. Only one Crater Hoof instead of two, but I'll take it. And there we go. So, yeah. Got lucky to dub deck another creativity after one didn't quite work out and the other one got discarded against Mono Blank Discard. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Of course, we would prefer Crater Hoof to be anything else. But we've got two token makers into a Transmogrify, facing a Lurus deck, which appears to be black-red. For now, we'll just play Satyr's Cunning. So a red-black Pyromancer deck might have some instant speed removal. Maybe Fatal Push can kill our token in response to the Transmogrify. And of course, Thought Seize, which is going to disrupt our combo by taking Transmogrify. And our opponent knows what's up. Just gonna Dragon Fodder here. And don't want to trade. On the bright side, I can escape my Satyr's Cunning next turn, since they put an extra card in Graveyard. Taps out for Young Pyromancer. I guess Dragon Fodder is slightly better here than Cunning.
And yeah, we're just one good top deck away from potentially killing them as long as they tap out and don't have instant speed removal. Otherwise, we'll have to maybe wait for creativity to target multiple tokens at once. Goes for Arcanists. And Claim gets back Roxa to make me discard. Don't really have a use for Crater Hoof in hand. Alright, Chandra could potentially get back a card from the graveyard, although there's nothing amazing to get back at the moment, and Chandra would most likely die next turn. Although I guess Arcanist would also just flash back Thoughtseize to take it away if I keep it in hand. Otherwise, if I could maybe wait until Creativity is in the graveyard, I could get it back as well if we've got a lot of mana. So maybe this turn just escape Satyr's Cunning. And sadly, Chandra can get back Transmogrify since the mana cost is 4 with a minus 2. Otherwise, that could be a consideration as well. Arcanist attacks alongside Supplier and an Elemental. So it doesn't feel like they've got Fatal Push in hand, otherwise they probably wouldn't have tapped out. So our opponent goes digging for some more interaction with Village Rites instead of going for Thoughtseize. Could triple block Arcanist or even quadruple block. Is that worth it? Maybe, I mean, I lose one token. They probably don't have more than one instant speed removal spell. And we'll see a Croxa escape. So that's gonna put us under a lot of pressure. But my opponent's once again tapped out, so... We could just draw the winning card here. And now the question is, am I gonna make use of Chandra? Yeah, I mean, might be better than a land. Although a land would let us creativity for two. Although I guess there's only one Crater Hoof left in the deck anyway, but it's mostly to potentially beat a removal spell in response. So I guess we'll just Chandra. And then I could add Loyalty, Too bad. or I could essentially deal one damage by making two Elementals. I guess one Loyalty is better. Could also flash back Satyr's Cunning at the cost of two Loyalty, that doesn't seem worth it. We can do this together. So I'm now empty-handed, no attacks. And if somehow Creativity ends up in the graveyard, I can cast that using Chandra's Minus. The Devil's just gonna kill Chandra, that's fine. And a supplier, so once again, opponent appears to be tapped out. And then, yeah, I think we'll just take eight. I mean, I could chump Croxa, we would still have enough to kill them. And that maybe buys me an extra turn. Castle, not quite doing it for me here since I don't want to trade three of my tokens even if it means getting in a bit of damage. So I can escape Satyr's Cunning or I can put Kahira in hand to then discard to Croxa. Probably just escape Satyr's Cunning. Could also just play Castle and pass, although I only have two tokens that can block Croxa, so not enough to actually trade off. And then I'll play the land so we can maybe creativity for two. Alright, so this is my last turn to top deck. They can give Arcanist haste with fame. So let's see what the Arcanist gets back. Goes for village rights. So 
So if I chump Croxa, I'm still taking seven, so I have to chump one additional creature. And then I go to one. Might still be able to get there here. All right. I think we still would have gotten there if we top decked, but we didn't. And now we're definitely dead next turn here. Oh well, sometimes you just don't draw the cards. I mean, I guess they did have a thought Thoughtseize turn one. So without it, we probably would have gotten there. Jeez. That'll do it too. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and our hand has token makers, but no creativity or transmogrify, and don't really like having crater hoof there, so I'll take my one mulligan for now, and this is much better. Wish I could have kept everything. Probably gonna need the extra token maker, and creativity could be uncastable if I draw the second basic forest. So I'm leaning towards keeping transmogrify, although there are situations where we would want creativity for x equals 2, or uh, to potentially just play around spot removal, but we'll go with the plan of trying to cast Transmogrify turn 4. Facing Zelfern Void, so colorless deck. Alright, I mean, I like my chances against most colorless decks, since they don't tend to have a lot of interaction. And we're capable of winning on turn 4. So just go to draw land, and I think we'll get there. Prophecy... Hmm, so... Yeah, I can't quite... Cunning and Prophecy... And look for land, so I guess we're just gonna... Play Satyr's Cunning... And hit for three. One goes back up to 18. And Karn's the Great Creator. Could get something to destroy my tokens, like a Ratchet Bomb. Yep, so yeah, I've got one turn to draw a land. And casting Prophecy is not gonna help. There's a land. Four times four, 16, plus eight, 24. So this should be plenty. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And this hand is missing token makers, but we do have Prophecy and Awakening to help us find some. So I'll keep... Turn one Steam Vents. So what could this be? Maybe a Neoform deck? I'm debating whether or not I want to play the Awakening as a land. I think I'll save it as a spell. And we did find our first token maker, so that's nice. So just blue-red for now. And a chart, of course, will probably tell us a bit more about the opponent's strategy here. This card's a Lightning Axe, so it looks like maybe an Arc Light Phoenix. Blue-red spells type deck. So, yeah, I mean, we should have a target for Fire Prophecy. Could maybe see a Stormwing Entity here, after playing a 1-mana spell. And we found some more lands so we can Transmogrify. Opponent passes. Migration is a good draw too. So we'll get in there and then make two more tokens and then... Gotta hope my opponent taps out so we can safely Transmogrify. And hope there's no sweeper. Opponent passes. Well, can't really go for the Transmogrify if they have four mana up. But I can activate Castle, which is probably the play here. Hmm. 
Brazen Borrower bounces one token, sure. Still worth it to activate Castle, I think. And if they kill another token, so be it. Shock. Alright. So we're not getting a ton of damage in, but we are getting that instant speed removal out of the opponent's hand. And we can just repopulate the board with another Dragon Fodder. Crackling Drake. Pretty good one here. So yeah, I don't think I would have lethal if I go for Transmogrify, only two creatures. So I'm gonna have to take it slow. Now I could attack and then Prophecy the Drake after damage, which is probably worth it actually. So let's attack. And let damage happen before we Prophecy. And put that Crater Hoof on the bottom. Maybe should have played Awakening Tapped to guarantee Transmogrify plus Dragon Fodder in the same turn. But I might need to keep Awakening to find a second Transmogrify if my opponent keeps finding more interaction here. Opponent plays Entity, still has two mana up. Yeah, probably no reason to go for it this turn. So we'll just go Friendship, Fodder... And that's it. And then next turn I can just activate Castle. If that's what we want to do. Another entity. And another friendship. So now I'm regretting once again not uh, playing the Awakening tapped, otherwise I could have played friendship and activated castle. So do I go for Transmogrify? Or not? I mean, I can just keep going wide here and then set up a castle Embrith that's guaranteed to be a lethal. Which I don't hate. So... Put Kahira in hand, play Friendship. Strategic planning. I mean, we could potentially die to one big attack here. If they can give Entity double strike somehow. No attack, another castle. I mean, I think I just castle instead of transmogrify. And then they've got two blockers. Let's say they have one more removal spell. Then they're still taking lethal. So they need two more removal spells to stay alive. So Shock would have stopped our Transmogrify plan. And a Lightning Axe discarding Shard, of course. Alright, so my opponent survives falling to two. But now it's pretty unlikely for them to have more interaction for Transmogrify. So we can just get them with the Crater Hoof instead now. And attacking with everyone would probably get the job done too. Opponent hasn't found a single copy of Arc Light Phoenix in the top half of their deck. Alright, there we go. Finally. 
But yeah, my opponent's still pretty dead on board. 12 plus 3, 15. And I could just attack, activate castle, or finally cast my Transmogrify for the win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Could use at least one more token maker. But Prophecy can help us find one. How about Awakening? I don't have a fourth land yet for Transmogrify, but we can always play this tapped on turn three. And in most situations, that's not going to hurt us. So I think I do hang on to it. Shimmer implies a Neoform combo deck, so that could kill us turn four. And since my opponent was on the play, they get the first crack at it. Could technically kill on turn three with a turn two Paradise Druid as well. Alright, another Dragon Fodder was an excellent draw. So, yeah. Now the question is, do I tap out? Because I do have Fire Prophecy in hand. If my opponents play next turn is Stormcaller plus Neoform, I can kill Stormcaller in response to the ETB trigger with Prophecy, and then we don't die, so it's probably worth it to wait. And then I guess we'll just play Awakening Tapped, since I'm probably not going to need it. And then we'll just play it a little slow. Perilous Voyage. Bounces and Scry 2. Alright, wasn't expecting that one. Let's see if they go for it. There it is, Stormcaller. In response to the trigger. Fire Prophecy. And we can get rid of a land. And then next turn, play another Dragon Fodder. Alright, opponent's gonna copy my Fire Prophecy to kill my token. Creativity could also be nice. So let's Dragon Fodder keep up Prophecy once again. All right, they had another Stormcaller here. And then we can get rid of Transmogrify, opponent concedes. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Well, turns out we needed both copies of Prophecy to survive, otherwise Neoform would have killed us. And yeah, next turn, Creativity could have transformed two tokens into double Crater Hoof, which might not quite have been lethal. Let's see, my opponent's at 18, double Crater Hoof, so we've got... I guess exactly 18 damage, because both 5-5s five get plus 4 plus 4, so we actually would have had the kill. So unfortunately didn't get to see it. But yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a hand that's missing Creativity or Transmogrify, but we do have Fire Prophecy for one extra draw. This one's definitely borderline, since we also need to find a couple more lands. But I'll try it. Speaker of the Heavens, so life gain deck. Definitely don't mind having double Prophecy in this matchup. And this is also a matchup where sometimes one Crater Hoof is not enough for a lethal attack. And we might need to draw into a second one or use Creativity to find two at once. I mean, I could kill Daxos. I think I'm still leaning towards killing Speaker of the Heavens. Heliod. Yeah, let's kill Speaker. And get rid of one token maker. And then I can kill Daxos on our following turn. Awakening is nice. Another interesting choice. I could play Awakening Tapped, Prophecy, and next one go Prophecy again, plus play Token Maker. Or I could keep Awakening as a kind of high impact way of refreshing my hands, but I also still need the Token Makers and Prophecy is fine in the matchup. So I'm actually leaning towards just playing it Tapped. And then I should probably just kill Daxos now. 
and get rid of, I guess, the land. They've got a backup Daxos and Soul Warden. Alright, I mean, I guess I'm just gonna make some tokens now. Although, kinda wanna kill Soul Warden first, otherwise, my opponent's gonna get a ton of triggers and get rid of. I guess it doesn't matter too much. Friendship. Now, at least we're not taking a ton of damage just yet. And if I draw creativity, we might be able to get there. And Johnny turns on Heliots. Uh, that's unfortunate. So all of a sudden we're on this two turn clock. Can't really afford to chump. Well, there's creativity. So creativity for two. Get double crater hoof. And that's 29 damage, so even with four toughness, they won't survive. Alright, that was a pretty good top deck. Alright, so to sum up my thoughts on the Creator Hoof deck, definitely not the most consistent or competitive deck out there. It's got a lot of vulnerabilities, it can be soft to sweeper effects, much like some tribal decks, but at the same time it's also a combo deck, so it's weak to counter spells and hand disruption, so it's got more weaknesses than most decks. But on the other hand, sometimes you just get to win on turn 4, or turn 5 you get to search up double crater hoof and deal an absurd amount of damage. So it does have that angle as well, and is definitely capable of beating some of the better historic decks in the format with a good draw. But as I've mentioned, not the most consistent deck, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a competitive choice. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.